Greetings and salutations, my minions. So in most horror stories, there's generally only one problem player, but in today's story we've got at least two, although arguably three what with how the DM handles a particular situation. So let's get right into it and roll for initiative to see how this train wreck unfolds. Presenting the cast, with names censored as usual. Me, well, me. HP, historian player, someone who I had just met at the time who studies history. LB, living bard, the closest thing you can have to an in real life bard in terms of a charisma score. Weeb, a freaking weeb, who apparently always played chaotic evil characters, but wanted to try something more serious this time. His friend told me he was going to need some serious restraining. Weeb's friend, actually a chill dude from what I saw. Problem, the youngest of the bunch, claimed to have some experience with 3.5e, but not so much with 5th edition. We start this story as I was getting desperate to get out of a very toxic relationship with some friend of mine who was passively destroying me and the campaign I was DMing at the time. So I decided to use a find a player slash group website that's popular here in Italy to find myself a group that I can play in for once. Ended up being the DM yet again, I decided to pitch the idea of a campaign with heavy political themes in my setting, and got some people interested, with HP, Weeb, Weeb's friend, and Problem joining, with LB that was already there thanks to me finding him at a local game shop. I meet all players separately due to the scheduling issues and have a session zero with all of them individually, telling them the exact same things. The only relevant player characters will be Weeb's and Problem's. First, I should preface that my homebrew setting is a very peculiar in its structural rules and the races that you can play, since I decided to write them all from scratch. I am also a student game designer and spent a lot of time properly homebrewing stuff. I won't list all of the races since there are close to 30, but they contain most of the usual classics like human, dwarf, orc, and some revisited classics like wood elves and drow now being separate classes. Only the races that are listed are allowed nay more, nay less, but it contains enough variety that it should satisfy the needs of most people. First thing the weeb asks is, Weeb, can I be an undead? Don't question why I decided to give him a quasi-southern accent. I thought it was appropriate, though considering I don't usually do accents, we'll see how well this sticks around later in the story. I suspect I will revert back to how I normally speak. Anyhow, me. Uh, no, it's not on the list, and I wouldn't even allow it in general. Weeb. Aw, oh, shucks. Can I instead be a Warforged? Me. Due to lore reasons, they don't exist yet, so unfortunately I have to say no again. Weeb. Can I be someone who replaced most of its body with cyborg pots? Me. So a Warforged again. Dude, I told you. No. This feels like you're trying to force a concept in my setting that I already told you isn't legal. Can you please stick to the guidelines? Weeb. Fine, I'll roll up a tieflin then. First red flag, after the introduction of Weeb's friend gave me. He tells me that he wants to make a tiefling hexblade, probably chaotic neutral or chaotic evil. I tell him that alignment is very relative in the setting, and usually evil means I'm more prone to use ambiguous means to reach the greater good. I also tell him, I don't want murder hobos in this campaign. The moment you start acting like one is the moment you will get the guards gunning you down with AK-47s. Firearms exist in the setting. He tells me it's okay, but I don't trust him. HP, who I had been talking with for a few days at this point, gives him two sessions before he drops out. Oh, how she'd be right. I wait and wait for his character's backstory and sheet, even giving him hints about how fiends work in my setting, or some morally ambiguous angels he can use as a base, up until two days before session, where I gently ask him, dude, what the heck, and he tells me a very basic background. Weeb. So yeah, my character is not really a disciple of chaos, but is more of an apostle of evil, that wants to spread his patron's influence on the world. Fun fact, all of the patrons I listed as possibilities to him were all either lawful evil or lawful neutral, and nobody wanted to spread evil, since they were more like ruthless lawmakers. Again, people with questionable means towards a greater good, so his character didn't even make sense from the start. Me. 
dude, I have waited an entire week, and not only all you give me are two basic sentences, but they are the cringiest and edgiest crap I have ever read, which is not only illegal for the setting, but isn't even what I asked for. I will have to reject your idea. I just didn't care that he had less than two days for writing his character. He didn't even reach out to me, and he was going to get what he deserved. Weeb. Ah, uh, fine. I'll roll up my most basic character concept for ya. Ya happy? The red flags are starting to become so many, I'm starting to wonder if I'm seeing a revival of the USSR. Me. What character? Weeb. A human battle master fighter with a polar master. Basic my butt. Me. If you're trying to power game, just know that I will employ ways to counter your build. Can I at least ask you to not take Sentinel at 4th level? We were starting at 3rd. Weeb. I make no such promises. Oh look! The red flags have become so many that Stalin rose from his grave asking me if I was fine. He then asks me what is the most Oriental-esque character he can make. Me. Look, like I told you in Session Zero, this planet is themed around European cultures. I'm saving the other continents' cultures for future settings, with very few exceptions. Though this won't stop you from playing a character of any ethnicity. One of the NPCs in the campaign is black, and he's from a Romanesque culture. Weeb, what are the closest cultures to the Orient? Me, Sandelves are a mix of Arabic, Turkish, and Elvish cultures and hobgoblins resemble Mongolians in this culture. Weeb, I'll play a human raised under the hobgoblins. At this point, I just okay his character concept because it was almost midnight and I wanted to rest. Let's see how first session goes. And yeah, we still haven't reached session one, nor problems character creation. Problems character creation actually goes rather fine. He rolls up a chaos neutral, noble changeling shadow sorcerer, I think. I remember everything saved for the subclass. To take advantage of the high political sub-theme of the campaign, with his character believing himself to be all high and mighty, when in reality he was just a nobody. Session 1 arrives, and Problem hosts us for the first session, since we were lacking a stable place to play sessions in. Session itself was… meh. I genuinely could have DM'd a lot better in general and I definitely went a little bit hammy on the acting of some cultists in the session itself. But HP, Weeb's friend, and LB were actually making it worthwhile to run. Now, I have to introduce one of the NPCs important to the plot of the campaign, and we'll call her General. She will be the only character to receive a physical description, save for Weeb's character, because it actually matters to the overall story I'm telling you. She is a titanic beast of a woman, described as very tall, towering over all of the PCs, and muscular, so definitely someone you don't want to mess with. The campaign opens with the PCs boarding a steamboat to get to the island which will serve as the campaign setting, and at the dock there is a board guard asking each passenger for their tickets. Problem's character arrives. Guard. Ticket and ID, please? The yellow-skinned elf asks. Problem's character. What? Well, don't you know who I am, hmm? The changeling in an arrogant tone says, which was actually in line with his characterization so far. Guard. No, I don't, sir. Ticket and ID, please. Problems character. I don't need no ticket. I am, insert character name that I forgot, and he slams his ticket on the wet dock, trying to enter the ship. General stops him with just a hand gesture and asks him, Sir. We're going to have to ask you to follow protocol. We've been having several problems regarding stowaways and criminal activity, so we've had to increase security. Now, can you please do what the guard asked you? The player says to me that he looks at her straight in the eye, to which I ask him his character's height, because I could swear his character was less than 1.7 meters, so there's a 40 centimeter difference between the two. He mysteriously adds 15 centimeters to the height of his character, just to make the difference smaller. He then asks me for one roll. Problem. I'd like to roll persuasion to use my words to warm my way into this general's good graces, and maybe something more. Me. You want to roll to seduce. Problem. Sorta, but not really. Don't treat me like an idiot. 
you were. I set an impossible DC. I don't want to be too harsh from the get-go, so I allow just this role to appear less like a jerk. He fails, by the way. Me. The general stares at you, unflinching, and just points you in the direction of the guard. He groans and proceeds to go to the guard. Yep, first roll, and he already tried to seduce someone. You can see why I called him just Problem, and not other nasty monikers. The story goes on, with a small time skip to the evening. With a small party open to the public, everyone dressed elegantly, especially the general. I introduced the other NPCs important to the campaign, not important to the story though, and most of the characters start interacting with them, including Weeb's friend, who asks General for some info on the island they are about to reach. Weeb then remembers he has to describe his character, and he describes him as a man of Japanese ethnicity, clad in samurai gear. Me. Dude, what did I ducking tell you? I told you. No stuff from other cultures besides those that I told you. Weeb. Oh, come on. It's an ama made by my family. Me. That's a crappy excuse and you know it. Weeb. Uh, fine. Mongolian and Japanese ama are the same anyways. What? I'll have you know, everything that I said so far was quoted almost word from word. Some other stuff happens, like the weeb, see why I called him that, trying to arm wrestle General in a friendly competition and losing. He rolled poorly, and calling this NPC, whispering to his friend, my precious snowflake. Don't think that I didn't hear it, you cheater. Oh yeah, still didn't see a sheet. And then the incident happens. LB's and Weeb's friends, characters, both are talking to General. When Problem asks me, Problem, does the General see where I am? He was standing near a fountain with a potted plant near him. Me, she isn't paying attention to you. She's talking to the other two PCs. <laughs> problem player, I want to cast Mage Hand to slap her on her butt. He was laughing. He meant it as a joke. He was about to molest someone as a joke. I stand in silence for a few seconds. Weeb and Weeb's friend laugh. My brain, when unable to process some stuff due to how absurdly disgusting it is, makes me laugh. I genuinely couldn't believe it. Me. Dude, no. Are you really sure? I ask him in disbelief. She will more than likely murder you if you do that. No, I can't let you do that. Problem. Oh, come on! How can she know it was me? Me. Your mage hand isn't invisible, you cretin. And you're in a restaurant hall filled with people. He was still mad at what happened on the docks and failed the seduction roll. And, I continue, setting aside the freaking obvious, are you seriously that dumb for trying to molest someone of that size? He was. Problem. I still want to do it. Me. No. Problem. I want- I said no. End of story. This is the part of the story where I said the DM was also potentially one of the problem players. Because honestly, I think he should have let the player do what he wanted to do here. If only because if his character dies, he'd learn a lesson to not do that in future settings and maybe grow as a player. And in general, if a player has the ability to do something, the DM just arbitrarily for no lore reason telling you no is going to rub everyone kind of the wrong way, even if it was for a good reason, as it was in this case. Anyhow, I digress. Let's continue with the story. What made this even worse is that there was a woman at the table, HP. He was seriously that bad at reading the room, both in and out of game. Still mad at this, he has his character approach General, discussing with LB's character about some interesting tourist sites on the island, glass filled with champagne in her hand. Problem's character purposefully shoves his hand between the two to grab something from the buffet. Me. Roll sleight of hand, I say. Problem. Why? He asks, annoyed by my request. Me. Did I stutter? I reply, starting to lose my patience. You are trying to shove your hand between two people, with the intent to annoy them, with one of them having a glass of champagne in her hand. Problem. Fine, I'll roll. And he rolls poorly. He drops the champagne on himself, ruining his expensive suit. And he starts insulting General like the Karen that he was. 
The general looked at him with a glance that would have killed someone, and guards come to drag him away in cuffs. And when away from everyone, the cop explains that this is an important evening for the general, so he should curb his behavior or get arrested for causing a scene, since he has been drawing eyes from the other guests. The rest of the session doesn't go spectacularly. I was really burned out by what happened, and didn't roleplay the cultist terrorist attempt that was supposed to kick off the story really well, even having to stop the session early because we ran out of time. After session, I walk with HP for a bit, and after some time we come to the conclusion that problem was definitely surpassing a line. She tells me, Thank you for intervening earlier. I was about to have my character stop this scene, but you beat me to it. So yeah, we were both of the same mind. After a couple of days, I feel like telling all the players how well they played or not, along with suggestions on my part. Not something I usually do, but with Problem and Weeb happening, I felt it necessary. LB was awesome, HP needed to work on her acting a bit, Weeb's friend was actually good, and then we get to the dynamic duo. Weeb starts gaslighting me when I tell him that he still didn't want to collaborate with me, and that he was trying to shoehorn an illegal character concept into the setting, telling me to not start a polemic. And then, problem. I'm going to post the WhatsApp messages we sent to each other, translated verbatim by Google Translate, and small grammatical adjustments by me. Me. Anyway, since we are here, I'd like to tell you how you fared during the first session of the campaign. I think this time I should state my opinions, since I don't usually do these things. I would tell you that aside not understanding sometimes why NPCs get annoyed if you treat them as jerks, sometimes you would have been great. After all, the characters can be arrogant and or jerks, but you made a serious mistake. Molesting someone is not fun. It is not going to be something I will allow to happen while I DM. Make sure you behave yourself from now on, because I won't let you get away with it on these things again. Problem. Look, first of all, the imaginary pat on the butt that I wanted to give the character was, I stress, imaginary, and was something made only as a joke. With your reasoning, I could say without a doubt that killing is not fun. It is the worst thing that can exist on the face of the earth. Violence is garbage. Regardless of whether they are personal issues or not, that killing does not translate into reality. Just as the arrogant character with some prejudice like mine is not a representation of my being a man. Me. Then I'm sorry. But I don't see why you should continue playing with this group. I tried to be nice and warn you, and you just parried yourself with pretty petty excuses and not a shred of apology. I'm really sorry, but you are out of this group. Effective immediately. Blocked immediately after that, I canceled the next session immediately due to the burnout from this event. And since the next one was Halloween, we were gonna skip anyways. So the campaign was on hiatus after a single session, which I felt could have been done 10,000 times better. I try to schedule the next session after a couple of weeks, but Weeb and Weeb's friend don't want to collaborate on finding a new day, basically ghosting me. I tell them after a few days that they don't have to remain and they leave, saying that they were too busy with university. I felt like crap. Was I being that guy? I thought at the time, but the universe found the world's most stubborn DM in existence. I contact a fellow friend of mine a fellow game design student, like as if I was in freaking Final Fantasy attempting a summon, and we rebuild the group from scratch, because I had an ingenious idea. Since the first session needed to be redone anyway, because I didn't DM it like I wanted to, and it crashed and burned, I came up with a plot regarding a time loop and started it again. So yeah, I tripped and started running faster as consequence. We have been going for several months now, and I basically turned all of the horror story stuff into my best weapon. My players have been fantastic, and I forged friendships who made me a lot better as a person. If you need a moral out of this, as a DM, you have to learn when to say no. And, on a more uplifting note, quoting Ichiban Kasuga from Yakuza Like a Dragon, Once you hit rock bottom, the only forward is up, but the bottom doesn't have to be all dark and gloomy. If you can stand and look up, you'll see the light of hope up there. End post. Yeah, so this story was kind of like death by a thousand paper cuts. There was no big blow off like you normally see in RPG horror stories. It was just kind of a slow burn and ultimate, you know, puttering out at the end there. But I think there's definitely a lot to learn here. 
as I commented in the story, I would not outright say no to a player from doing something unless I thought it was offending another player, which he may have thought there. But in this instance, if I warned him that doing the whole Mage Hand thing would result in his death, and he still wanted to do it, I'd probably let him do it, if only for the consequences to be felt across everyone at the table. They're in session one, and the consequences of a PC led to his own death. None of them are going to be trying anything like that in the future without proper calls. So that's my comment there for the DM. But in the end, it seems like he ultimately got a really good group out of this and had a fun way to spin all of this into a redo of session one. So that's pretty cool. And as for the dynamic duo, as it was called in the story, really, if the DM is wanting to do a really big homebrew setting and he's already established all of the rules as it appears was done here, just stick to the rules. If you really, really want to play someone that does not fit the rules and the DM's not allowing it, maybe you just didn't belong in the campaign to begin with. One final note here, uh, I don't know if it was Google Translate or what, but the way the DM spoke or rather wrote to the players in WhatsApp seemed really confrontational. So DM, if you're listening, and I suspect you are because this story was posted to my own subreddit, link in the description, maybe try to phrase things a little bit less confrontational. So specifically telling the player that he made a quote, very serious mistake is essentially out of the gate, telling the player that what he did is wrong. A better way to phrase that might be to say, some of the other players were made uncomfortable at the table with his attempt to sexually assault another player. And even if he was being in character, you'd like to point that out to prevent that from happening again and causing any issues at the table. And what I just said could probably go through a few iterations before you hit the send button, just to make sure it doesn't sound confrontational. The best way I found to handle with problem players in basically any game, this is universal. I did a lot of raiding in Final Fantasy XIV back in my day, and this is what I did back then too. It's to just try and make them see without directly telling them what they did is not cool, but without you telling them, hey, you're being a jerk. And if you're having trouble trying to figure out how to do that, well, there's a lot of D&D communities on Reddit where you can go and ask for help. And that's probably what I do. Anyhow, that's it for today's story. As always, the source of it is in the description below. And if you like the video and you want to see more videos just like this one, be sure to hit that subscribe button and bell notification icon in order to be notified of my future videos. And while you wait for those future videos, here are a few related videos that you can watch from my channel in the meantime.